Hey, good afternoon, everyone, and thanks for joining today's first briefing at the Jerusalem Press Club. Overnight, Israeli security forces, including the police's elite counter-terrorist unit, Yamam, as well as the Shin Bet and the IDF, successfully rescued two hostages held by Hamas in Rafah as preparations for expansion of the military maneuver in southern Gaza continue. Meanwhile, two re reservists were killed and two seriously wounded in a separate incident. We are now joined by Major General in Reserves, David Sul, former commander of the Yamam, for his insight on this incredible operational achievement and his analysis on what lies ahead. Sul was also Chief of Staff to the Minister of Public Security, Commander of the Border Police, and head of the Tel Aviv District at the Israel Police. He was also a Knesset member for the Hatnoa Party. Hello, General Tzul. Thank you so much for being with us today. Hi, Talia. Thank you for having me. Uh, what can you tell us about uh, the operation so far? Uh, just a few general words. Well, <clears throat> definitely it's a, it's a very, uh, let's say, a happy day, I can say, in a way, um, that uh, we saved two, uh, two fire hostages. Unfortunately, as you said, in a separate uh, place, we lost two uh, officers, young officers. Unfortunately, this is the story of our life. Um, it's a very complicated uh, operation because it's a very hostile uh, area. Uh, as we all know, we are we are not yet at the Rafa, which is the south of the city. Not a very loud city. Uh, like usually, it's about two uh, two hundred thousand uh, people, but they uh, we pushed more than a million as a refugees, as a places uh, uh, to be uh, to be sheltered be from Khan Yunus in uh, north of Gaza. So that makes it very, very complicated to um, act in this area. Um, I must say, say that um, this uh, operation uh, would have, uh, let's say, been uh, executed uh, uh, only if we are uh, stuck with, if we weren't stuck at the negotiation to bring all the 136 uh, uh, hostages we have there, so uh, we we, were, we could skip on uh, we could skip on uh, this operation. Um, but unfortunately, we see that uh, it's a very cynical uh, negotiation, very complicated to uh, to achieve uh, this goal. Uh, definitely, we uh, every time we have a window of opportunity, and this is a very, very short window of opportunity. I'm talking about uh, the tactical uh, uh, capability uh, because it's a combination of a few units, the Shin Bet, the, the intelligence, the Israeli uh, security services, which is amazing info intelligence. Because it's not only to locate them uh, where they're staying, but it's also to online and all the time a real time uh, real time intelligence, the operational intelligence unit of the Shimbet and the Yamam is an executors, uh, which this is their expertise, uh, and the the largest uh, the larger uh, largest uh, largest uh, ring is uh, the military which can uh, allow this kind of operation to execute uh, mainly on the rescue outside. Because when we're going in, and this is maybe the most uh, sensitive part of the operation to reach to the point which they are uh, on the doors, on the doors of the building, as we, was published, uh, it's, a, it's a house, it's a building, which is different from tunnels, and uh, it's more uh, uh, available maybe from the intelligence and also to uh, how to uh, act. Uh, and with the sensitive that it's uh, close to Egypt and the, all the Rafa issue, which is now on the on the news. That's why I, I think there was a lot of uh, criticized maybe by, uh, on the bombing and uh, trying to uh, to let our forces go out. Understood. Could you elaborate a little bit more about the kinds of intelligence needed to achieve such an operation and 
Um, does this indicate that there's maybe intelligence on the locations of the other hostages? I don't want to elaborate for that. I think uh, if we have intelligence, it's very important to uh, keep it. Definitely, it will uh, cause uh, some security uh, measures uh, from the Hamas now. And uh, hopefully, every time we will hit this opportunity, we will act. We saw that it's very uh, complicated. Unfortunately, with the incidents we had with the three hostages, which were uh, escaped, and uh, they were shot by mistake by our forces. Uh, because it wasn't an uh, operation was um, uh, planned. Um, and uh, it's very, very complicated to walk in this kind of uh, area. The intelligence, if it's not on the real time, uh, it can be, we know that, and we saw uh, where uh, hostages were being uh, held in the tunnels, in some of the buildings. We saw evidence for that, and I think We'll see more and more uh, evidence like that as much, as much as we're pushing to the south, because Khan Yunus and also Rafa is uh, maybe the two uh, mainly uh, areas which is uh, we need to uh, to uh, finish the the tactical uh, operation. You mentioned that they were being held in a building as opposed to underneath in a tunnel. Um, how does this impact the 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 operational tactics? Uh, it's in it's in a dense urban area. Um, what what kinds of things does the army take into consideration when it carries out this kind of uh, maneuver? Because uh, it's a a very uh, populated area, as I as I mentioned before, Rafa is uh, very crowded. Uh, more than one million refugees are located in Rafa, a lot of forces. We have three, no, sorry, four, uh, still four battalions who are uh, in, in uh, Rafa. Uh, and we have to um, take all this in calculation because we need to reach to the exact point which the hostages are uh, located without even uh, comforting anyone. So they have to be in a different uh, way of uh, think about Fauda, so Fauda. And because this, the same unit, as uh, you remember, like a week or two weeks ago, did the operation at the hospital in uh, in Jenin. So your mom knows how to uh, act in this uh, environment. Uh, again, with the umbrella of the, the security forces to get the intelligence. And once they, uh, they reach the point, so they take all the coverage, whatever, and they act like uh, totally soldiers. And they are uh, very, very good soldiers. I mean, very good, very good fighters. I mean, you can imagine, like uh, I can compare maybe to like the Navy SEAL or the Delta, Matkal in Israel. And uh, they are super, uh, and I'm not saying uh, it's exaggerating, they are super fighters. And uh, it takes a few minutes to operate, to kill the, the, the those who are holding the hostages and to rescue them because they don't have time in ground. They have to go in, get out in, in a very short time. So in this time, the moment they were... Uh, uh, through the undercover uh, formation. So it started to be a very aggressive uh, shooting from all around, as we know. They start shooting on them and they uh, had to uh, get all the support from the military, which is uh, giving them like a, a sterilic uh, zone in order to uh, go out. Okay, we have a few more questions coming in. Uh, the first one is about the status of the negotiations uh, to release the, the rest of the hostages. Is it possible that Israel is doing both uh, both things uh, simultaneously? On the one hand, doing uh, military or police operations to, to extract hostages, but on the other hand, also continuing negotiations. And does this tell us anything about the status of these negotiations? Well, as we know that uh, tomorrow the head of the CIA is coming to uh, to the area, he's going to be in Cairo, 
I don't think there's a still a decision whether we're going to participate in this meeting or not. This is the cabinet and, and the prime minister to decide. Uh, there is no uh, controversy or there's no uh, any, uh, it's not, it's not one uh, against the other. If we have a window of opportunity to save them, of course we do it, but it's better to have them in uh, without risk, re uh, risking any of the forces or the, the hostages by themselves. So uh, as far as uh, we will, uh, we can move forward in the negotiation. We know that the gaps are tremendously. I don't think the answer uh, which we were given to the Paris uh, deal was in any, any um, it's a consensus that it's not reasonable what they uh, what they uh, give as an answer because they were talking about Alexa and the prisoners and get in the not talking about the releasing all kind of things which are not uh, uh, in the in the deal uh, which wasn't discussed in uh, Gaza in uh, uh, Paris. Um, I'm glad they didn't ask us to leave Tel Aviv also, but you know, so we need. To, to try to see what is reasonable and to to move forward because i think we are committed to that israel is committed to bring those hostages back home and i want to say something internationally because we're talking to the international media there's there can be a lot of criticize uh, not proportional uh, or, or a lot of um, uh, questions to be raised and it's legitimate to even to uh, uh, to arrest them and uh, to ask about it. It's not legitimate to uh, push for a ceasefire without putting in the equation, uh, in the formula. Once you say ceasefire, you have to say, and releasing the hostages. This is, it's not, we can't make it normal that there are 134 hostages being held by the Hamas babies, women, uh, elderly people, and soldiers. This is not something which can be in any way to be normal. And uh, if we didn't even get any uh, uh, sign whether uh, the, they are alive or not. We didn't get any signal if uh, the uh, all the drugs we, we brought in were uh, reached the 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 people who need it and this is not something when the, when you talk about humanitarian uh, uh, aid that we're bringing in we have to speak about humanitarian also releasing of uh, the elderly people the women the, the the babies and this is not normal on the international community Absolutely, and it's messages that continue to resonate, at least on on the Israeli, on the Israeli part. Uh, one of the journalists is asking several questions about Egypt's role in in uh, the developments, and of course how Israel is preparing for Egyptian policy. Uh, the first question is about potential spillover of Palestinian uh, Palestinians affected by the war uh, into Egypt, uh, and if Israel should commence with its ground operation to the south, uh, is Israel uh, coordinating with uh, Egypt in any way to prevent this spillover? Um, and can you confirm whether Egypt and Israel have been speaking about uh, anything to do with the operation itself? How how deep the level of liaison is here? Uh, about the operation, definitely not. Is, th there are very few who were in the secret is this, of this operation, and there's no necessary even to, uh, to inform the, not uh, anyone about it. It's a tactical operation. Uh, about the operation in Ga in Rafa, I'm talking about the, the, the largest operation moving in as a, after Khan Yunus, definitely there are, uh, uh, we need to be uh, coordinated with the Egyptian because it's reflected because of the Philadelphia area road, which is like almost 14 kilometers going from the west to the east to Kerem Shalom. And uh, we have the two checkpoints, the main checkpoints, which is the today the only checkpoints which are active for uh, humanitarian uh, aid going in into uh, Gaza. We're talking about uh, Kerem Shalom and Rafa, 
check points. So those are both uh, sensitive points and all the 14 kilometers of uh, Philadelphia, which have to be coordinated with the Egyptian. And we, we have a good, uh, I think, uh, in an open channel with the Egyptian. Uh, unfortunately, the, the politicians are not talking so much. I mean, talking President Sisi with the Prime Minister, but on the level of uh, intelligence and generals, I was the, the general for the borders for uh, two years, even it was a long time ago. But I had a very good cooperation with my partner in the other side, the general of the borders. And there's a lot of discussions as a, because we are uh, allies, we uh, sign on agreement, which is in, important, I think, for the both sides. About the tunnels, about the, the tunnels coming from Phil Egypt to Gaza, this is the incentive and the, uh, of the Egyptian, not less than the Israelis, to stop this smuggling going on. I know that the Egyptians are doing some work on that, but definitely what we see now in uh, Rafa, Khan Yunus, and Gaza, it's not enough. So definitely they will have to do more. We don't push the refugees to go into uh, Egypt. I, I can understand the sensitive uh, and uh, the sentiment in, uh, in the Egyptian, but it's not a policy of Israel to push the refugees or the Gaza people into uh, into Sinai. That, that's not the issue. But yeah, it's uh, it's something we are coordinating with the Egyptian. Okay, and of and of course the Egyptians will have to work hard to prevent uh, the smuggling, not just in the in the in in the intern, but also in the long term. Uh, the second question is about uh, reports that we've heard of a buildup of forces on the Egyptian border, uh, the Egyptian army, and whether this is something that, if it's true, is something that Israel uh, looks uh, positively on, or is this something um, that is worrying for us? It's not worrying for us. We can understand it. It's not against Israel. It's uh, to protect their border. So uh, definitely it's not an issue that Israel is... Um, uh, uh, encouraging, but I think it's a Egyptian, in, interior Egyptian decision, which we, we can understand it. Okay, one journalist is asking about the potential um, um, size of civilians uh, harmed uh, during a, an increased operation towards the south, uh, and also in terms of IDF casualties, are we expecting uh, larger numbers on uh, both the parts of the um, Israeli forces as well as the Palestinian population? Well, the two main um, targets which were uh, declared by the government, the cabinet of this operation are, uh, first of all, to diffuse the capabilities, the military capabilities of the Hamas. And the second one is to release the the hostages so doesn't everyone can put what is more important but you, both of those uh, missions are all the time in the in the eye of the decision makers of the the military and the security forces um, we we trying very hard not to arm the the civilians it's not like uh, we see, we hear the propaganda that we're doing a genocide or we're going on purpose to kill uh, like we maybe faced in the 7th of October, not maybe because this was a genocide. I mean, going in and killing deliberately uh, babies, women, everyone. This is not something we're doing. Unfortunately, we can say, yeah, there, are, there is uh, a casualties which are being uh, in this, trapped in this, uh, area. It's, a, it's so complicated. And one of the main uh, purposes of this that uh, uh, we take in time is to how to move how to move, which is very complicated, the refugees from one place to another so we can react, uh, we can act like it's not sterilic, but we saw even yesterday the tunnels which we show which was shown uh, that UNRWA is giving a shelter or by being uh, active or 
just uh, they don't have any other choice, so they don't uh, they can't resist. But even UNRWA schools uh, headquarters, um, the 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 any every second house we see that there is a, a it's like a using the human shields as part of this uh, this uh, organization. So. It's very complicated to how to define between the military and others. Although we cannot, we can say by numbers that definitely we're talking about approximately ten thousand uh, militants that uh, were killed uh, in this uh, in this operation. Uh, but you know, counting numbers, as I as even cynical I, I have to say, it's not an issue. It's 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 in very everyone which is being dead. It's an issue, but the how to collapse this organization because we could end this war in any minute if they surrender without any conditions release the hostages so at the moment they do that we have a ceasefire the israel doesn't have any territorial any national we don't have any issue in gaza we left gaza in 2005 and i think it was a great decision of uh, prime minister sharon and unfortunately uh, any any penny, any uh, dollar, any pound was given by European uh, community and the international community to Gaza should have gone to uh, prosperity. But unfortunately, it went to uh, armed tunnels and uh, of course. Uh, just two two last questions. Do you think that the events of the last few days, both this operation specifically in which we see where hostages are being held uh, and also the discovery, as you mentioned, of, uh, of, of um, Hamas um, a computer center underneath uh, an UNRWA um, installation. Uh, are these things that could, um, could, could help uh, convince Israel's allies that an, an, an extended operation in the southern Gaza is something that's uh, worth uh, investing in and supporting, contrary to um, statements that were made over the last few days, discouraging Israel from doing so? Well, yeah, I wish it would. But unfortunately, I must say, those who are against uh, this operation against Israel are uh, will be maybe uh, all the time. Those who want to look at the facts definitely can be... Uh, can be maybe convinced by that, and I think what we will, will what uh, the IDF spokesman will release maybe later in the coming days, weeks, from what we got there, will uh, will show a lot of things. So, but uh, as I said before, we're talking about uh, in a, a arena that uh, ignorant and also anti-Semitic are uh, taking place. So it's very it's a, it's a, like a a different uh, zone of uh, action that we are uh, weak on that, because we are so convinced that this is uh, the most justified war and uh, we're fighting for ourselves. But when you hear ignorant students or people saying from the river to the sea, it means that they want to eliminate all Israel. So they don't even talking about not, uh, and I was, uh, as you mentioned, a parliament member in a party, which the, the flag was two states uh, solutions, uh, which is not the government, this current government of core policy, which I oppose this government. And I think the majority of the people today are not supporting this government, but there is a consensus about this war that is the most justified war, even from the left to the most right. I wanted to ask you about your your uh, vision for the next stage in Gaza, but I'm not sure that we have enough time given uh, given the length of uh, this current interview. So maybe we'll maybe we'll leave it for the next round. Yeah, it will give you a good uh, reason why to do it uh, again. Sure, uh, Major General in Reserves David Sewell, thank you very much for your time today. Thank you. Okay, and for those of you on the line, don't forget to join us for our afternoon briefing with the previous US, U.S. Administration's Special Representative for International Negotiations on the Abram Accords, Jason Greenblatt, at 4.15 p.m. Israel time. Details are in your inboxes. And thank you so much to my colleague, Ellie Kletstein, for facilitating this call. Good afternoon for now.